and slowly we, we're beginning to get this global view of things that, well, everywhere you turn to is facing sooner or later the same pattern that has already happened in the United States. Discovery peaked in 1930, production in 1970. It's now extremely mature. Production is falling and nothing can change it. And so when we look at the world as a whole, it's simply made up of these component parts. And we find that the peak of discovery for the world as a whole was in 1964. And that by around 210, you can't put an exact date on it because it depends on consumption, which in turn depends on demand and recession. But generally speaking, around 210, the world reaches its top. And then after that, production has to start falling. And it cannot be reversed. It just falls forever and ever and ever. And it falls, I would guess, at between 2 and 3% a year. It's important for our country to understand, I think most Americans do, that we import over half of our crude oil stocks from abroad. And sometimes we import that oil from countries that don't particularly like us. It puts us at a... It jeopardizes our national security to be dependent on sources of energy from countries that don't care for America, what we stand for, what we love. Even if we do the things that President Bush proposes, which is to take oil from the Arctic Wildlife Refuge in Alaska, unfortunately you can see from this diagram that that is not going to make any substantial contribution to oil production into the future. We can get some oil from gas to liquids projects, converting natural gas to um, liquid petroleum. Um, we can maybe get some oil from the tar sands and the oil shales in Venezuela and Alberta, Canada. But none of those are capable in a quantitative sense of providing significant quantities of oil and none of them are going to prevent the inevitable decline of oil production into the future. Now, um, Professor Emeritus Kenneth DeFays of Princeton University told us that in fact oil peaked, oil production peaked last year in December 2005. Most of the other well um, instructed uh, geologists of the world would suggest that peak oil has either happened or is going to happen before 2010. It is only a lunatic fringe of deliberate optimists or de deliberately deceptive spokespeople that try to suggest that peak oil is going to happen much beyond 2010. And the problem is the Hirsch report which came out and was suppressed by the US government for about six months. The Hirsch report stated that if you take action to um, change over to sustainable energy programs 20 years in advance, then you can do it almost without any inconvenience to the population. If you leave it till 10 years in advance of peak oil, then there's going to be significant economic dislocation and disruption of people. There'll be a lot of uh, problems. If you leave it until peak oil has happened before you even start taking measures to mitigate peak oil, then there will be absolutely massive economic disruption and dislocation. Now these words are words made by a very measured sort of man who is not the sort of person to make exaggerated claims. And they are talking about catastrophic economic uh, disruption. Peak oil and the implications it has if we haven't prepared for it are in particularly if you think that it's an event that might be happening now or three or four years from now or even ten years from now is so utterly serious on society that it's in my opinion if global warming get, gets placed as a three on a scale of one to ten this is a twelve we have no spare capacity we have no no way to address fixing spare capacity and demand is now a run on train which means it's growing too fast and it's not slowing down at all because of the oil prices. And so demand is just about to exceed supply and supply will always equal use. 
the, uh, the conventional wisdom in markets is that, hey, oil's going to be out in the year 2100, therefore it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when it runs out to the last drop. What matters is what happens when there is less tomorrow than there is today. <laughs> When a market reaches an extremity, you tend to get a volatility at the top. And basically, one of the things that we've seen in the last two or three years in the, the oil market uh, particularly is that even the slightest amount of production um, being shut down, maybe 50,000 or 100,000 barrels of oil uh, due to a tropical storm in uh, the Mexican Gulf, uh, this has, is having a, a disproportionate effect on, a, on an energy market where we're consuming possibly... Uh, the equivalent of a 150, 160 million barrels of oil a day. Uh, in, my, in my experience, in my opinion, from working for some of the largest investment banks in the world, uh, we see this kind of behaviour in markets. It, is, it would tend to endorse uh, what Colin Campbell and uh, the, uh, the ASPO um, are basically saying, that we are, we are near the peak. If you, if you were to sit down and think of the number of people involved in the... Uh, supplying your everyday needs and where they're located, it's obvious that the, the world economy is inextricably linked. Everybody's dependent on each other. Therefore, a shock uh, in one part of the system will, will be transmitted to other parts of the system. Mm. So uh, I think it's, it's very... Maybe they feel that it's too, you know, oh, we can't do anything about it or we're too... Um, uh, it's not our problem, but it is their problem. And being, you know, no one is independent in, in the global market. Everybody has bought into the same concept, and anybody who tries to make a stand and not be in that in that system is is their companies, their assets, their their, their competitiveness is, is punished. The last year we produced more oil than we discovered was in 1980. As you can see, the consumption of oil has exceeded discovery since 1980 and the consumption of oil is the black line on this diagram. We are currently burning between four and six barrels of oil for every one that we are discovering. Now, I don't know about you, but I know just enough about maintaining a household budget to know that you cannot spend four times, four to six times faster than you would without losing your savings. Other resources whose de depletion is beginning to threaten our survival are depletion of fresh water, depletion of topsoil. Ultimately, both problems are caused by overpopulation placing unmanageable stress on the ecosystem. Soils are being eroded by wind and water in the form of flooding, mostly because overpopulation forces people to graze their livestock, breed goats, on ever increasingly marginal land. This causes desertification. Anyone who's seen goats eat know that they rip everything out by the root. And further pressure on the land that's even still marginally productive. And deserts are advancing and coalescing all around the world. Now up until the beginning of the 18th century, that's the sort of mid-1700s, uh, the population rose and fell, but, uh, and it rose and fell in response to things such as the Black Plague and the you know, various famines, and if the summer was warm, then the population rose a little bit, and if the winter was very cold, the population fell. But basically, the world seemed to hover.